Sweet. Um, I, I, Ravi got me all psyched up, but I feel like he said everything I wanted to say uh, even better. So uh, again, my name is Al Karim. I'm actually a co-founder of a development company uh, working in primarily in established areas here in Calgary as well. And as Sheriff mentioned, uh, I'm a co-founder of a recent prop tech company really focused on the renter landlord relationship within the residential side. Uh, a little bit about Round Square. We've been uh, operating now in Calgary and now in Winnipeg for the last five years, kind of focused on mixed use multifamily projects, uh, really focused on urban, uh, you know, reinvigoration, finding ways to build on main streets and bring back uh, population and density back to our established neighborhoods. So uh, super passionate about, you know, our city and how we grow. And I think Calgary is in one of these really interesting places where uh, we're going to have to be provocative uh, and super, super innovative to figure out how to solve some of the problems that, you know, are facing us as a city, but also, you know, us as a, as a globe in North America with, with many of these major metropolitan cities trying to understand what, what the downtown fabrics of, you know, downtowns that were built out to be primarily work focused. Um, you know, my, my presentation isn't going to be flashy, but it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, similar to what Ravi said, um, I believe that our focus is is on people. Um, you know, a lot of the discussions that we've been I've been hearing and seeing is around attracting great companies to come back to you know these cities, or you know the fact that COVID may not be lasting uh, in terms of the impact that it's having. Uh, and so I've, I've seen lots of great kind of articles about Calgary attracting new tech companies, and I think that's amazing, and I think that's part of our growth strategy, but. I think it really starts with with our people and, you know, in technology, I've learned a little bit so far in my time that we really need to think about our users. And when we think about people, we need to think about how they interact with our city. And I think for us to attract the vibrancies or attract the tech companies we're talking about, we need to figure out how we're going to attract the right people. And so these are just some amazing images of, you know, Sled Island here in Calgary, which was kind of a grassroots music scene startup that kind of popped up all throughout the city. And Sled has kind of become, you know, a North American phenomenon. And I think how we program our cities is going to be absolutely critical uh, to the future of what those spaces look like. And so really focused on programming is something that I think is going to take us into the future. Um, you know, if I, if I was to dive in deeper, similar to what Ravi said is we have a ton of spaces. And when I think about the spaces that are vacant, uh, you know, Ravi talked a lot about our artists and I, I think a lot about small businesses and the vibrancy that small business brings to us. How do we figure out ways to, you know, get more flexible and how do cities come up with policies that allow for people to reactivate spaces that are sitting vacant. And I think the other important thing that Ravi flagged that's very similar to kind of a lot about what we've been thinking is how do you motivate landlords to actually be willing to participate into these things? Uh, you know, oftentimes keeping the door shut is more viable than keeping those doors open. And so I think it takes a collaborative approach of, you know, city, private, uh, and then and then young small business entrepreneurs. And we've seen some amazing stories of adaptive reuse through COVID. And I think, you know, we're starting to scratch the surface of some of those examples. Um, there's a there's a company in Calgary that launched four weeks ago called Peugeot's Burgers. Um, and they did $50,000 in hamburgers their first week working out of craft beer markets kitchen. And so, you know, 70 people making hamburgers to service uh, a delivery network. And so you can kind of see the innovation coming. And I think that this type of adaptive reuse, reusing spaces that shut down in the morning or the evening, or, you know, even for Calgary that, that we see a lot of these vacancies, there's an opportunity to really turn these into more vibrant sectors. Um, you know, the big question is, is what, what does the future of our cores look like? Do people come back to work? And what does that work environment look like? Um, I'm a big believer in, in connection and bringing people together is where we see some of our greatest innovations. You think of, you know, the late Tony Shea, who talked about um, the interaction of the, the greatest interaction for us or the greatest innovation is people being next to one another, you know, and he, I think he took that from Triumph of the City. And so that really resonates with me. And I think we all have this innate want and need to be close to other people. And that's where we'll see, you know, some of our greatest inventions is those kind of hallway pass movements or, or those water cooler uh, connections. And you don't get that without being physically close to people. I do believe, though, 
we're going to have to be a lot more intentional about why, why we're bringing those people back and solely providing space or beautiful space will not be enough of a reason. When you think about some of the cities that have gone through this, I think Detroit is an obvious one. You know, how, how do we get people back to a, a decimated core? And, you, you know, again, it, it starts with arts, culture, and it's bottom up. And I think, you know, Calgary specifically, dear to my heart, is we, we have a pretty robust central business district, but we have a lot of missing need for housing. And so when we think about how do we get people not only to look at adaptive reuses of, of some of our you know, vacant spaces, it's going to be about how do we actually interact at the ground level? What is it going to take for us to really get families to show up and say, oh, yeah, no, I actually want to go down to the core. And unfortunately, the way that our core has been built out um, we haven't done that enough, but I think there is amazing fabric in places to do that. And the cheapest way to do it is not to, you know, tear down, rip up and build new structure. It's going to be around how do we build programming? Um, you know, we just had Chinook Blast here in Calgary, which was an art exhibit. And so many families there checking out, you know, balloons and lit up kind of art exhibits. And so all it really takes is thinking about what do people want, how will they interact, and how do we continue to give that to them in the future? And I think that bottom-up approach, if we can attract enough people to say, we want to be back in these places in Calgary, again, being really close to me, we want to be back at that city because of what's happening from a cultural perspective. I think the the, the companies will follow the people, and we've seen that before in, in the past. And so, you know, if, if I was to say, where should we invest our dollars? It's in the people. How do we invest in people so we can build this thing about from the bottom? Um, and, I, and I really do believe technology will play, play a role. And, you know, these are just examples with what Big is doing here in Japan and woven cities. And again, not being an architect, not being a planner, but understanding that the future, there is technology starting to interface in so many of these different mediums. And so how do we leverage technology within our cores? What does that look like? Uh, I was on a prop tech panel yesterday at the UFC and, you know, hearing Aspen Properties talk about what the future might look like for office space where, you know, you, you pay per usage. So every, every company pays based on when their employees are there and, and there's no segregated space for companies, but they all kind of live in this ecosystem of where they work and play. And so you think about the dynamics of that, of companies collaborating with each other, insecting with each other rather than being kind of segregated. And it, it, it's an incredible concept. And so I think, you know, technology will have an incredible role. Sustainability will also start to play some really key pieces. But I think when we talk about what are some of the easiest ways to solve these problems, we know we can't technically tear down these assets or, you know, reinvigorate them very easily. So how do we start to draw people to these places based on things that we know scale a lot easier? Um, this is, again, just talking about I don't, I don't think any core will ever again be a, be a CBD. I think work environments will be different and it'll be focused around how we live, how we connect with one another and how we strike that right balance. And so I think if we can continue to focus again on people striking that right balance is, is what's going to be the key to kind of reinvigorating many of, my, many of the cores in North America. And that's it. Hopefully that was a, a quick 15 minutes and provocative.